Hi everyone, Michelle Markey with Medina Domestic Arts Studio. Um, this video is actually for the intermediate students who were in class last week. Sadly, we were not able to spend a lot of time on background coloring and the various different methodologies that you can use. So this is going to be a class uh, to discuss, or this video is going to be a discussion on, on the various different methods. However, the, one of the very first things I want to do, again, for this group <clears throat> is point out what happens if you don't get your DTF transfer exactly flat. Um, this was one, um, again, the rows, many of you will recognize this from class. I ended up getting it wrinkled in the heat press, so it ended up not getting completely on the flat part of the fabric, so we have a, a, a split here. But then really the other thing I wanted to show you is that um, it, it just got really messed up, but this is what DTFs look like when they don't get completely ironed down. So just a word to the wise, if you have purchased a DTF from me, or if you have your own DTFs, make sure when you go to put them in the heat press that the fabric is absolutely completely flat and not bunched up underneath the parchment paper or the silicone mat that you have um, because that's exactly what happened to me. Okay, the first background fill, um, which is the easiest in my opinion, it is using Karandash crayons. And what I'm going to do on this particular pattern is I'm going to work in sections around here and just give you um, a glimpse of what this is. The instructions are going to basically be for an entire piece, but since I'm working with just this one, I'm going to do it in sections so that you can see all five or six or however many I end up demoing here today. Um, on this particular work so that you can understand all of them first before you make up your mind which one you want to go with. All right, um, I'm going to pretend that there is a bit of green that we can see back behind our work here. Um, there's no rhyme or reason for this other than I do typically like to keep a bit of white space around the work itself. You can always come back in and color up to that leaf, but by starting about a half an inch away, you can actually prevent any kind of potential bleeding or anything that may happen to your design with fabric medium or dropping paint or whatever on here. Uh, again, start at least a half an inch away from your design, and that way it will give you room to play around with later. Um, now, okay, so now I've got my grass down, now I, or my greenery in the back, and now I'm working my way towards sky. Um, when I have these, I like to go and have multiple different colors. I'm going to start with this fairly light tur turquoise color, and I'm, I'm not getting it right on the green. I'm not overlapping it. I'm actually kind of creating a, a space in between, um, and but just laying down a just ever so slight bit of color. Many of you have heard me say this in class, and I'll say it again. It's easier to go from light to dark than it is from dark to light. Uh, doesn't mean you can't go immediately and create a dark surface. Here, let me scooch this up so we can see what I'm working on here. But you definitely um, can always darken something. It's not necessarily as easy to lighten something. All right, I'm coming in with the next color. Notice, by the way, that I'm working kind of with a the side of the crayon. Uh, you you want to try to minimize the streaks as much as possible. So I'm just trying to shade rather than actually color as if I were drawing on something. I'm just creating a very light shade on top of that. And on this particular case, I did actually overlap the blues. All right, I'm going to pick this one last blue here. 
Um, notice that they're not necessarily the same colors of blue, but I don't think that really matters. I think the, the key here is to get kind of just an even coloring with this. You'll still see some overlapping. Um, and I think that's good enough. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour out some golden GAC 900. Yes, I apologize for the grody bottle. Um, this is pretty much how all my stuff looks. Um, and I'm going to just pour some in one of my paint palettes. Actually, no, for this, I'm actually gonna pour it in the center um, because I'm gonna show you what I consider to be the easiest tool, if I can get this to come out. Okay, looks like the lid is clogged up, which is a common occurrence, by the way, with fabric medium. If you have a spout or a, it, it, the, it gets filled up or it gets dried out, so you usually have to go in with a, I use a toothpick or something to clean out the dried out fabric medium that's in there. All right, now to make this really super easy, I'm going to push this forward. I don't suggest you do this on your work, but for the case of this, for this it's on video, I do want you to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take a foam brush like this and I'm going to get it pretty wet with the fabric medium. And I'm just gonna start in the blues and just start scrubbing back and forth. Now notice I'm not getting this into the green. I'm just right now working strictly with the blue. And I think you can see right off the bat what this does is it gives it an immediate blended effect, but it's modeled. Um, and I don't mind that. I, I actually, I think sometimes a modeled look gives you a little bit more of kind of room, wiggle room when it comes to bobos, or as many of you have heard me call it, creative opportunities. Um, so sometimes maybe blotchies might not be such a bad idea. Now, once you do this, if you are not necessarily happy with all those blotchies, I'm going to suggest that you come in with your lightest shade, which in this case was the turquoise. You know, lay a slight bit layer down there and here. Notice again, I'm working for the side. I'm being very light-handed. And uh, I did notice that uh, just then while I was coloring, I, I could see kind of like almost a wave of fabric medium. This is the only thing working with these brushes. They can get saturated. So you need to be just slightly a bit careful when you're going and applying it on. Now I'm going to come in maybe and just lay a tiny bit of the dark down just to kind of put, again, some, some interest in my background. Once I've done that, without using any additional fabric medium, I'm coming back over and effectively squeegeeing it, sponging it, whatever word you want to use, and voila. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to flip it over and use the opposite side and come in and put a little bit on the green. And I bring the green actually into the blue. And just kind of rubbing it along that blue line will ultimately kind of work any kind of distinct line that you see here out. This is one reason why working with a wet surface and doing backgrounds with fabric is the best way to go. Now, I'm going to apologize. There's a, a color underneath here that's actually from the foam board that I have on here. I'm not very good about keeping my foam board clean. So that's it. That's the easiest method I know when people ask me what a beginner should use in creating a background. That's what I'm going to tell you. You can't go wrong with these Caran d'Ache crayons because they are water soluble. They work really well. Okay, so that's technique number one. Stay tuned for technique number two. Okay, everyone, technique number two. Um, this is actually one of my favorites too because it is so easy. But it's also easy to kind of mess this one up. 
um, because you can get too carried away with your colors and you can actually end up with mud before it's all said and done. So what I've got here are three complementary colors, the yellow, the turquoise, and the uh, fuchsia, light magenta, whatever you want to call it. And these are tinted fabric mediums that I've made up. Now, many of y'all, before you left class, were given a bottle of the pale version of whatever you wanted to start out with. In this particular case, I'm going to consider that this first color to be the yellow. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cotton ball. Now, you can also use a cotton pad. You can use a makeup sponge. You can use anything that you can get kind of a, a, a a blotchy texture from. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to dip it into my paint, make sure looking at this, I've got enough, kind of make sure I get all of the excess off if, if possible, and I'm just gonna start dabbing it. And I want this to be random. I don't want there to be any kind of rhyme or reason to my coloring. Um, I just want there to be a, a, enough color on here to look different, not necessarily nice, perfectly round shapes. Now, if you use those makeup sponges, word to the wise, you will definitely get little round shapes, but that's not necessarily bad. Just depends on really what kind of look you're going for. The reason I like cotton balls, number one, they're cheap, and number two, they make kind of a nice model look. Now, here's where it can get kind of touchy. If you want this yellow to show through, and you do not want the other colors to blend in with it, let this dry first. And you can either just let it naturally dry, or you can take it over to an iron, and with a press cloth down on both the ironing board and on top of your work, you can hit it with a hot cotton setting iron for about 15, 20 seconds, and get this all nice and dry. Um, I'm going to take the risk here that it's, um, I put very little down, so I'm kind of hoping that that color will stay. And I think I'm now going to come over here to the blue. Now, once again, make sure you dab off as much of the excess as possible. And that one had quite a bit of, of color on it. But now what I'm going to do is just come in here and lightly put down some of the blue on, on top of here. Um, you're going to have to dab pretty frequently. I will say that the thing is fabric medium is this is not like water. You're not going to get, um, oh, and be careful. Yes, you do need to probably cover up your work to make sure you don't actually get carried away because this is kind of a very easy, fun thing to do. But before you know it, you'll end up doing just like what I did and getting your stuff all, all um, covered with this. Now, what would I do in a case like that if I needed to cover up? I would actually just work on making sure that my leaf was very dark and green and that would cover up any of this blue that I accidentally got on it. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so again, if I didn't want this pink to interfere with this, then I would come along and hit it with a hot dry iron and try to make sure that it was uh, completely dry before I, I brought the pink on. But because this is for a video, of course, naturally I'm gonna just jump right in and grab some of that pink um, and, and take it off. By the way, a lot of people were asking me in class about the consistency. It's one of the reasons I like GAC 900, but you also have heard me say how touchy GAC 900 can be as far as bleeding. I think that using plain fabric medium is your best go. I will tell you that this is a fabric medium that has pearlescent in it, so it's a little bit thicker. Thick isn't such a bad thing um, when doing this particular technique. So see, I can get just a nice, soft blend now, notice when I first touch down, it's gonna give you some heavier blotches rather than what you're gonna have later on. My suggestion is, is that you do this several different times and put dark blotches kind of throughout so that you don't necessarily have this one single blotch that's gonna stand out like a sore thumb. 
frankly, that looks great. I'm very happy with that. Now you don't have to necessarily do different colors. You could actually could have put down just the yellow and then come back in, say, with a darker orange or even a red or something um, dark gold. Uh, you don't have to use mixed colors, but I did want to show you that you can do that and that it can look quite nice. All right, that in a nutshell is technique number two. Stay tuned for the next one. Hi everyone, I'm back. Okay, so this next one. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Honestly, it's a lot of fun. But it's just flat messy as all get out. I'm not gonna hide it. And um, you're gonna see some interesting stuff here. So this may be one of those do as I say sort of, but make your own judgment call on how well you would manage this. Um, the very first thing I'm going to show you is I've put the GAC 900 in a little spray bottle. Now, you don't have to do this. Um, in fact, you know, I still have a little bit here in my, in my plate. I could come here and get my fabric wet with fabric medium, which is what you see me doing right now. Or, or you can have a good time and start spraying. And I'm just spraying over a light area. Now, um, <laughs> this is, again, this is messy. Um, but uh, one of the things that I think I'm going to do here real quick uh, is just put a paper towel down kind of over my main design like that so it doesn't pick it up. And then I'm going to continue spraying. And I'm just kind of going all over. Now... The next thing I'm going to do, so I've, I've got this fairly saturated. It's, it's, it's actually pretty wet. In fact, if I, let's see here, if I move this up a bit so that you can see it. Let me move the, this pattern just slightly, ever so slightly. Now, you're, again, you're seeing a bunch of stuff underneath this, but this, this is wet. This is very wet. And so I'm just going to kind of push some of the fabric medium out. Now, the reason you're doing this is because, again, the wetter the fabric, the less blotchiness that you'll have to worry about. But this is going to be one of those that, to heck with it. Um, however this goes is, is just the way it's going to happen. And that's because I'm using a color spray. Now, this is by Mirabu. You can probably see the name right there. Um, they're made in Germany, but there's plenty of various different... Uh, ink sprays out there. Uh, they are fun to play with, but they're going to be very messy. So I'm going to try to be as careful as possible, but you're going to see what I'm talking about here in a minute. So I'm going to just take this and start spritzing. And look at that. Great color uh, right off the bat. But it makes blotchies. And um, so, so if you're going to do this, you're going to have to accept the fact that this is the way it's going to look. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is take another color and spray it as well. No, but, but why did I put the fabric medium down? Because if you look, the color here is very diffused. So it doesn't give you a super sharp color. Um, it, if we did this just by itself, it would be like a big blotch and none of this nice kind of smooth spray. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this orange and again, you can see it splotches. Um, I'm just putting little little dabs down. Now, if, 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 if that blotch really bothers you, I'm going to say come in here and kind of dab at it. Notice when I start dabbing that it's diffusing that color. I'm just diffusing as much as, as I can. I'm not rubbing it, I'm just dabbing because I really don't want to pull up too much color. But let's say, for instance, I did. Let's say, oh my gosh, this is just way too much. So once again, let's fall back on our, 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 our cotton ball and I would sit here and I would dab it and you see I'm picking up 
a good deal of color um, because maybe that's what you're not going to want, but, but this is there. This is there, okay? There's not a whole lot you can do about it except, except the fact that it actually looks pretty cool. Now, I'm gonna go one more step and call it good, uh, and that is to use a really bright red. And I'm gonna see if I can pull this off without putting too much down. And I'm gonna try to get it out here towards the edge. Boop, well, there you go. Uh, so you can understand now why I was reluctant in a way to show you this, except that when we had the class on this before, this was a lot of fun. And we did it on just a plain piece of fabric. And I'm gonna suggest that if you are looking to try to create your own custom fabric, that uh, this is a very fun way to do it. So once again, I'll come in here, I'll start dabbing just to kind of uh, maybe get some of the heavy duty spots out. But uh, anyway, I, I just wanted to show you this. I, I think it's a lot of fun. I think though it, it certainly has its limitations. Um, and let me just lift this paper towel now and just see what we have got going on here. See, it actually leaked into this. Plus, you know, if you don't have this cut to fit the, the size that you have, it doesn't really look all that good. I mean, I suppose you can come back in after the fact. You can try to maybe soften up the edges. Oops, hang on, I'm, I'm moving the camera here, sorry. Um, but I, again, this is just mainly for demonstration purposes. I, I really don't recommend this one. If you already have a design, particularly if you've already colored, but it is a lot of fun and it is something to consider um, if you have a, the access to ink sprays or being able to put inks in a bottle and then putting it over where fabric medium is. Okay, back again, and you can probably see the aftermath of the last uh, uh, technique off to the side here. Again, I love the way it looks. It's just not a very, very practical um, solution for being able to color a background. But whether the pattern has been colored or not, you really wanna try to just save that one for a piece of fabric that you plan on putting a design on top of after you've already spray painted it. All right, um, I'm going to be putting some more golden GAC. Let me pour this out here. I'm getting a fairly um, generous portion poured out. And the reason being is for this next technique, I'm gonna kind of split this up. Um, on one half, I'm going to color plain. On the other half, I'm going to color with the uh, colors that I'm using with the GAC 900 first, because I really think I want you to see the various different ways you can do this, um, but it also depends on how you mix your color and what you mix with. Now, one of the things that we discussed in class is that inks and dyes tend to just immediately grab a hold of the fabric and stay. Um, and, and you guys were questioning me on why I'm so hot on these purely pigments. And that is because basically, um, and I have an example of one here that we're going to put down, it's just strict pigment so that it doesn't have something in it that's going to go ahead and grab a hold of the color. It is just color and it mixes very well with the, the fabric medium. So the very first trial here that I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in some of the and this is Lagoon Blue, one stopper's worth, mixed up with my plain fabric medium. And for those who don't know, I have a video on my YouTube channel that is how to make your own fabric medium. And if you're interested, you can go check that out in my one of my playlists. Or text me and I'll send you a link to it. Anyway, I'm dipping my sponge brush again. I think this is the fastest way to get this down. And this goes on very nice. Um, and when I put this down, notice that I get a nice, smooth coverage. Now, many of you who got your bottles the, this last Wednesday, yes, it was Wednesday, um, I tried to make it pale like this. Because if you all you did was just put this color down, personally, I think that gives you the simplest, best, light, 
enough color, but it doesn't take away from your pattern, okay? But I understand that many of you like to experiment, and so I'm going to actually pull this up a little bit further. Uh, it's stuck to the plastic here because everything is so wet. By the way, if your plastic is really wet, you may want to go ahead, I'm going to show you this here real quick. Uh, sometimes the plastic can get so wet that you have color underneath here. Be sure to come underneath and, and wipe your plastic clean. I know that many of you did get to take home your piece of Mylar. Um, I love using Mylar because it's so smooth, but do keep it clean underneath. All right, now we're kind of here at the other edge of the fabric. I, I want to put a, just another color down completely different color um, so that you can see what this looks like um, in order to be able to say maybe make your own color combinations. Again, this is purely pigment. It is the pale lavender. Um, it's very, very thick. Um, by the way, if any of y'all do end up purchasing um, Leslie's stuff and you want some tips and tricks on it, um, just send me a text or put some note in the comments below and I'll give you some feedback on that. I do have other videos on it, but um, you may want to, to know some specifics uh, for yourself. So contact me. All right, now, so I'm going to put it down right here where that blue stops. And this, this is again why I like it so much. It doesn't go on blotchy. In fact, look how nice and smooth. Um, Wow, I am extraordinarily happy with that. That is such a nice, smooth line that there's a nice blend between this very, very pale turquoise and this darker lavender. So if I were doing something like this, I'm, I'm, I'm even going to just kind of break out one more, and I'm going to put it down here at this end. This is her Hugs and Kisses, which is kind of a deep red, blood red. Um, let's put the this at the other end just for ha-has, because again, I want to give you guys options on how to go about putting color to make your backgrounds different, and I can come in here the same thing. Now, it's bleeding slightly, not surprising. Remember what I told you about GAC 900, um, and that's what the base of this is um, in the blue. Nope, I beg your pardon. Um, let me step back. No, it's not. It's plain fabric medium. So we haven't put the GAC 900 in. So I'm going to say that's just, just ongoing. I'm, I'm putting more down so I can test for myself to see whether that's actual bleeding or whether um, I'm just pushing the color in that direction. So let's just stop here for a moment and look. I will actually lift the color up. Um, sometimes you're going to have to do this to, to, to be able to see and no, it was just me putting the color down. So never mind. Um, but one of the things, if you were interested in getting a really strong gradation, that is where you're going to want to put your GAC 900 down first. So I'm gonna grab a whole mess of it right here and come in and lay down the GAC 900 right next to where we just put down the various different color grades, okay? Now again, let's get some more color. Uh, let's put the turquoise down first. Pardon my reach, I know that my big hand is in the camera, but I only have so much room to work. Somebody mentioned to me, um, you know, they knew I had a studio and did I work out in the studio? And it's like, no, actually I work at my kitchen table. There's so much stuff out at my studio that I, I fear for me being clumsy or whatever and getting uh, excess color or making a mistake and spilling stuff all over my inventory. So I keep my color coloring separate and apart from all of the stuff that I have available for sale and away from all my student stuff. Um, because nobody wants to end up with a big old blotch of color on their, their block that they're going to be coloring on. All right, so now what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to repeat the same scenario. I'm going to come in here. Now look what happens. Look how very pale, 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 pale that blue goes on. Um, in fact, you can hardly even see it. And 
this is why, you know, I'm always telling you guys, you can always start out pale, but then you can always darken up. That is, that is almost translucent pale. And again, please don't mind the colors underneath there. That is from the foam board that I have all this resting on. Now I'm going to take my sponge and try to wipe off any excess. I'm now going to come in with the purple. Again, put some of that purple down. Very nice, lovely, very pale. I'll even bring it down into there. But do you see now that doesn't bleed? And that's because, you know, if there was an issue over here, the best way to prevent it is to put um, the fabric medium down first. And you can see that um, effectively it just kind of blends very smoothly into that. Again, taking my brush and getting it cleaned off, dipping it into the hugs and kisses and coming in here. Now I'm trying to deliberately be strong because I want you to see, you know, it's not a question that you can't put strong color down. It's just, you need to really bring in a lot. Um, so there you go. Let's just watch this here for a minute. Um, no bleeding. I mean, you did see a bit of it over here, but from what you can see here, it goes on just very nice and clean. Now, what if, what if you wanted a very nice kind of fuzzy line to go in between each one of those colors? And I'm just gonna grab a very big brush, okay? Now this is overkill, complete, utter overkill. But what I'm gonna do is, is I can come in here and I can scrub between the color and what that's doing, if there was any thought of there being a line, particularly right here, do you notice how that line has now disappeared? Likewise down here, let me get the fabric uh, kind of square here. Or, and if I just rub that back and forth, what I'm doing is I'm taking away, let me bring this down just a bit here, sorry about that. Any kind of line by allowing the brush to pick up the excess. Now this is not perfect, I still see a, a fairly distinctive line, but it's much, much, much softer than it was earlier. So big fat brushes, there's other ones that are called mop brushes, or you can simply use a big old fat makeup brush. Um, most of you got one in your kit, so that's what it was for, is to help smooth out any edge that you may have between <clears throat> one color gradation versus the other. Um, in fact, let me just continue to do that over here let me try to get this smoothed out so that you can see this. But you can come on even after the fact and just keep working the color. And again, any of that, those lines, they're just slowly but surely disappearing. Now you do need to do this while everything is still wet. That is absolutely critical. And uh, there you go. Now yes, there is a lot of cat hair on here. In this house, there's cat hair everywhere. Um, but it just kind of lends itself to the charm. Coming down here and repeating again the same thing with the purple. Now, after a while, what you may see is that there's no more blending. That means your brush has picked up all the possible color that it can, and it's just not able to pick up anymore. So what you would do is you would go around and you would get yourself another dry brush. By the way, these brushes are always dry. You never want them wet, not even with a fabric medium, and that's what helps gives you this nice kind of glow um, in between all of those various different colors. So I hope this helps. This is a technique that basically needs to be practiced ongoing to get it just right. But when you have it just right, this is absolutely gorgeous. I won't tell you that this is the easiest one. In fact, I would venture to say that this is one of the hardest ones outside, of course, of spraying and trying to make sure you don't get stuff on your pattern. But this is a technique that many, many acrylic painters use, many water colorists use, and I think we, too, in the fabric painting world can use it as well 
we just have to be mindful of the fact that fabric will grab and will hold on to stain. Like for instance, right here, you know, that's where I painted where there's no fabric medium and you can see a very strong distinction between the two. Likewise, where it was up here and there was no fabric medium. So my preference, put the fabric medium down first, then put your color down. You can always add more color. Even after it's dry, you can add more color. But you always want to do your blending while it's still freshly wet. Okay, so I'm back, and this is kind of the last one, and this is one, again, that is tricky um, because you're going to go ahead and put your, your fabric medium down. You want the surface to basically be wet. Um, and you're going to have to work fast on this because this requires the surface be continually wet. Now, if you're working a big piece, basically kind of like this one is, um, you're, you'll, you'll probably have to wet your background several times as you work kind of in a circle around whichever direction you're going. Um, but you definitely want to only be working on a wet surface. And this is kind of a... This is almost a kind of a combination of all the above type of stuff. But the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out some color from... Actually, I'm going to use an Inktense pencil. And I know most of you are going... But, but you told us we weren't going to use Inktense pencils. Yes, that is correct. However... Um, many of you know about the normal technique where we come in and we take the pencil tip and we get a, a bit of color. Now I have that on there right now, so I'm getting green at the end. Now there's some green there, but now what I'm also going to come along and do is I'm going to grab a bright blue and I'm going to kind of put it down here. Oops, oops, let me see, let me show you, sorry. Put it down here. So I've got two colors. I have green at one end and I have blue on the other. And now I'm just gonna come in here and I'm going to kind of rub those two together, okay? And you can see it makes kind of a very interesting technique. Um, if you find that one color, sorry, 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 sorry. If you find one color is not quite as strong as the other, and, and oh, by the way, I would always use a sponge brush for this. Uh, you can use regular brushes, but um, the sponge brush, and, and of course you can use different heads, gives you kind of a better way of getting that blend at the same time of putting the color down. Okay, so I'm putting some more fabric medium down just to make sure that we have enough um, let's do this here real quick. This is kind of one of those methods that you kind of have to make sure each step is, is followed to the nth degree. So what I'm going to do here is do all three pencils at the same time. So you can put, this is, uh, Sherbert Lemon, and I'm putting just a tiny bit of Sherbert Lemon here at the tip. And this works best with a foam brush. And then I'm going to come in here with my green, and I'm going to put a little bit of green here in the middle, and then I'm going to put a little bit of blue right here at the end. And then I'm going to come along and just basically go back and forth with my two colors, or three colors actually, and you can see that I get kind of a rainbow effect. Now this is a very small head. And this was really for demo purposes. And those of you who were in the background class, you're all shaking your head going, I don't remember that technique. No, you wouldn't. Uh, we actually did this more with brushes, but you can actually do this with a foam brush as well. So if, however, you feel like there's you know not enough color of one versus the other, of course you can come in, and this is where it gets to be a little dangerous. You can pull out a brush and hang 
grab one here real quick. Get it wet with the fabric medium. Get a little bit more color off the side. You know how we've done this before. This is nothing new here. And you can come in and start laying your color down. Now again, remember this thing has got a ton of fabric medium down. So this lighter color of the Sherbert Lemon isn't gonna go down all that strong. But pull in the, let's see, I believe this is Ionian Green. Do the same thing. Get enough green there going on that. And now you can see that the two can be merged together um, and then you can come in and put more color down. Um, I, it, 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 this is again a tricky one. I, I, I saved it for last because I can just hear the gasps of everybody who was in class going, who, I don't know, I don't know. But it is a way to get, particularly if you're doing a sunset, uh, maybe in the background, and you'll see I'm just blending all of these together. I just keep going over and over and over it because there's so much fabric medium below that it allows that green to come and blend very seamlessly with the um, Sherbert Lemon. And now I'm going to do the same thing with that blue. Got a little blue there at the end. Come in here. Yes, it looks strong initially, but just keep working that color back and forth with your brush. And I think I'm showing you all this because a lot of you have intense pencils. And I know, um, and I don't blame you, that a lot of you don't wanna go rushing out and buying brand new paint or get brand new colors. You want to use what you have on hand. So you can take that tinted fabric medium and you could put it down first. And then you can come in and pick out three different colors of ink tense pencils, or if you have paints, um, and you can start out by putting it on a sponge brush, just like you saw again, you put it on the tip, the, 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 the beginning, the middle, and the end, put that down first, and then you can come along and augment it by pulling a bit of color off and putting that up. So if you really were trying to get a sunset, you know, obviously the sky will grow darker and more blue or more dark blue as it gets towards the horizon or to the top or whatever you want to call it. I think this is considered the horizon. Um, this is considered the zenith or something. I don't know. There's some fancy name for it. Anyway, you get my drift. So that's it. You now have five different techniques on how to color a background onto fabric. If you have any questions about any of these particular techniques, please do not hesitate to put comments below. For those of you who were in my class, if you are still confused about any of these techniques, please do not hesitate to contact me. I will be more than happy to walk through these step by step. And uh, in fact, I will probably be putting slides out that shows you this on a step-by-step -step technique in addition to this video. So as always, thanks for watching.